Hello to the pessimistic, optimistic, and everyone in between. My name is Connor Phillippe, and welcome back to the Minnesotan Sports Podcast. And it is finally here, the very first Vikings game of the season. I cannot wait for this game to start. And just a quick reminder to you, every single week during the NFL season, as a Vikings fan, I do a raw reaction to every single game. So it's basically me, every single time... A Vikings game happens, the instant that game ends, I'm flipping the camera around and I'm giving my raw, honest reaction just seconds after seeing the end result of the game. And I like doing that because it it feels kind of like I'm, I'm actually getting the main points I feel across and there's some funny moments when there's frustrating losses or exciting wins. Just that initial feeling is just really fun to capture that. And so I do that every single week, so make sure you tune in for that every week. And this week, I'm actually going to be doing my raw reaction from U.S. Bank Stadium. I'm actually going to be going to the game this week with my wife uh, against the Buccaneers. We are going to be breaking down the Vikings versus Bucks game. This is a game between two teams that are going to have very different seasons, I feel like, this, this year. I think the Bucks are going to look pretty rough this year. I think that there's going to be issues with deciding which quarterback is going to end up coming. I I think that at least three or four games from each quarterback as a starter. That's my prediction, that both of these two quarterbacks will be benched at some point in the season. But they're trotting out Baker Mayfield to start out the season, which I think is a good idea with this new Brian Flores defense. They kind of have the strategy of come after the quarterback early and often, and I just think that's a bad idea to throw out a quarterback who's never started a game in that kind of a situation. So good idea by the Bucks to do that. But Baker Mayfield coming off of a season where he bounced from two different teams, went to the Panthers, sucked there, went to the Rams, and had the one good game where he had that game-winning drive. And besides that, he really hasn't been impressive the last couple years. So a lot of things to feel positive about as a Vikings fan, but... Also, there's going to be plenty of things where we're going to have concerns of our own. And so let's just get into the main keys to the game. Well, first, just going over the injuries. Really, there's one clear injury here. The Vikings honestly doing really well injury-wise now. You know, Hawkinson's ear infection miraculously cleared up as soon as he signed that extension with the Vikings. We seem to be doing pretty well now injury-wise. And honestly, the Bucks are too. Just a few guys that are questionable for this game. The big injury already was announced and is already, you know, un- unchangeable, and that is Ryan Jensen, the Bucks star center, out for the season with that injury, and it's a big hit to the Buccaneers. So hopefully that means good things for, you know, Tonga and Lowry and Phillips and maybe even Jordan Hicks coming in every now and then as a linebacker, because that was definitely an issue last season is was getting pressure on the interior of the defensive line, as well as we were supposed to be a good run-stuffing team last year, and we just weren't, especially in that playoff game against the Giants. And if we're going to get back to that point, which is the goal, then we're going to have to do better against the run against those teams. And so that's going to be a big factor is him not being in the game, uh, uh, Jensen not being in the game is going to be important for the Bucs and for the Vikings. So let's get into the rest of the keys to the game. The one overarching key to the game for the Vikings is do not, under any circumstances, take the Bucks for granted. I mean, they've got a team that I think is going to struggle this year, especially with it kind of just being a, a, a down year for them, where they're now without Tom Brady. There's going to be a lot of frustration at quarterbacks. But if you look at some of these players on their roster still, I mean... Still have Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. Those That's a solid wide receiver combination. Trey Palmer, not the most you know solid wide receiver three. And then you've got a pretty solid defense still because you've got Vita Vea, you've got uh, Devin White, Levante David, Shaquille Barrett, Jamel Dean, Antoine Winfield Jr. I mean, some really solid players still on this defense, and they're probably going to cause some problems for this Vikings offense throughout this game. So the biggest thing, first and foremost, do not look at this team without Tom Brady and just assume, you know, oh, we can take care of them. Let's just go out here and, you know, make quick work of it. Because 
this is a very early trap game for the Vikings, especially with the Thursday night matchup looming next Thursday against the Eagles. That's the big game that everyone's looking forward to, but it could easily be a loss for the bucket for the Vikings if they take their eye off the ball this week. Everyone knows and everyone stresses it so much. Every single team in the NFL is an NFL team of team full of professional players that can beat you if you don't play to your full potential. That's the main thing. Do not just think of this game as a game you can just breeze by. The Vikings, if there's one thing, if there's one positive that comes out of the season the Vikings had last year, it's that the Vikings should, you'd think, not take any team for granted after all the close games against the best teams and the worst teams. The Vikings of all teams should know that any team can beat you any given week and that you have to bring your A game every week in order to win games. So the next key to the game is to get to Baker early, and this is going to be a big factor because I do still think Baker has something left in the tank, and I also think he is a quarterback that, you know, every quarterback is based off of momentum and every team is based off momentum, but some quarterbacks are based off that more than others. They get going and they take off, and then if they have like a down a down stretch, it's a really long slump of, of struggling. And I just think that if the Vikings can get to him early and throw him off and get this offense off sync right off the bat, I think that the Vikings can have a really good day against this Buccaneers offense. I think a lot of that has to do with letting Daniil Hunter go early and often in this game. And I do think Brian Flores will do that. But I think that's going to be a major factor is how comfortable is Baker going to be early in the game. If he's uncomfortable right away, I think it's going to spell some really good things for this Vikings team. Next, I have the the Bucks pass rush versus the Vikings offensive line. And I'm specifically thinking about the interior here. The Bucks have some good rushers on the outside, but I feel much better about Brian O'Neill and Christian Derrissaw to lock things down on those edges. That's not the concern for the Vikings this year. The concern is Bradbury and Cleveland and Ingram in that interior offensive line. Three players, I was really hoping there would be at least one of those guys that would be replaced by a better interior offensive lineman in the offseason. The Vikings still didn't do it, even after the quarterback's documentary, seeing how much he was hit and realizing, maybe we should protect this guy. Kirk Cousins is still going to be in trouble this season, and he's going to have to do the same thing he did last year, which is, throw quickly and often and still, I guess, get flamed by the media for throwing, you know, bad passes and interceptions and throwing checkdowns when in reality it's the only reason he's doing those things is because he has like a second and a half to throw. All that aside, that was kind of a side tangent. The big thing in this game on Sunday is going to be Vita Vea versus those three interior offensive linemen. Vita Vea, a very good rusher on the interior. Can those three guys stop him and the other interior defensive linemen from getting to Kirk as much as they possibly can? No one's expecting those three to carry the offensive line or be the hero in a game. They just need to be decent and the Vikings are in business. Also, the running game is going to be huge there too, because I think that it's going to be easy for the Vikings to run the ball a few times, get stuffed, and then just immediately try to go through the air throughout the rest of the game. That's the fourth key to the game. Keep going with the run game. Even if it doesn't work out the first couple drives, you got to churn that out, because if the Vikings don't rush the ball well against the Bucks and just kind of give up with the run game and go full pass, and that becomes a good part of their game plan, the Eagles are going to eat that up. The Eagles are going to go into that game next week in at Lincoln, Lincoln Financial Field, and if they're expecting a pass for the majority of the game and there's no threat to run, we're toast against the Eagles. So establish the run, make that a very important part of our offense this year, if you establish that, imagine how successful play actions would be. Kirk Cousins is already so good at those play action passes. Imagine if Madison ends up being a big force in this offense. That pa- that play action pass is going to be an even bigger factor 
especially when you factor in all the offensive weapons we have in Jefferson, Hawkinson, Addison, KJ, and even at even Oliver, you throw him him in as well. This passing attack is going to rely a lot on how well we can establish the run. A couple other goals, trying to go to Addison and Osborne as much as possible in this game. You know, obviously you got to rely on Jefferson and Hawkinson to be the the main guys in the passing game to start out the season because you're still trying to figure that out. But if it, we are in a situation where we're in good control of the game, if you know we've got all those things in place, try bringing out more packages with Addison and Osborne involved and see who's going to start emerging as that next guy because that's going to be important to see who that's going to be and, and taking that and running with it as the season goes on. And then also trying to give Madison the most of the carries, make sure that we are not, you know, cutting Madison short of greatness again because, you know, we haven't didn't give him a lot of opportunities with Cook. And I just fear that because he didn't get a lot of opportunities with Cook, we're immediately going to try and replace him with another guy in our core of guys. So now on to the actual official prediction. And I gave this prediction already if you didn't watch my video on Thursday where I broke down every single game and made a prediction for every game. I said it briefly, but just teased it because I wanted to do this video, but make sure you check out that video for all the rest of the breakdowns. But I did say that I think the Vikings would win that game in that video. I still stick by that. My prediction is that the Vikings win this game 27-17. to And yes, it's bold of me to say right off the bat that the Vikings are going to win a game by more than a touchdown. But if there's any game to start off on the right foot and win a game more handily, I think this is the game to do it. I think that the Vikings definitely are capable of it. I think that Jensen being out is going to help us a lot in terms of shutting down the running game. And also, I think that this Brian Flores style defense with, you know, regardless of Baker being an experienced quarterback, I still think that the team itself is not used to having him as a quarterback and they're they're experiencing a lot of turnaround. So I think that Brian Flores hitting this offense early and often with pass rushes and everything like that, I think that's going to play a big role in the Vikings having a good first week to the season and the Bucks struggling a lot in this game. So I say they win 27 to 17. But let me know what you think in the comments, what you think about my keys to the game. If you have any other keys to the game you want to add, let me know all of that, and I'm happy to answer any questions in the comments. And again, make sure you check out that raw reaction that I'll be releasing on Sunday. Hopefully it's a positive one, but we're just going to have to see. But thanks again so much. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the flip side.